I recently wrote my latest book, Let Me Go, Breaking the Shackles of Insecurity. If there is anything that's plaguing lives today, it is insecurity. It has robbed people of destinies. It has robbed people of their marriages, relationships, because you cannot relate if you are an insecure person. People lose their jobs because of insecurity, lose their families, lose their businesses because of insecurity. And it has plagued many. If uh, you get up to the level of leadership and you're insecure, that's a taboo. Woe unto the people that you're leading because they're gonna fall into serious traps just because of the spirit of insecurity. I believe with all of my heart that this is a book that everybody needs to get a hold of because it's gonna help you know how to be single and okay, how to be married and okay, how to relate with your boss and okay, how to do life and be okay, because I tell you the truth, if you are not okay and if you're insecure, everything around you will be falling apart. And there are so many people that are asking themselves, why do I miss it? Why do my relationships always fail? Why do I always miss the mark? What am I going to do? Let me tell you, insecurity is a demonic agenda. And if you read this book, you realize it plagued many even in the word of God. You go to somebody like Saul, he was so full of insecurity. You go to somebody like Gideon, he was so insecure. You go to many people in the Bible that were absolutely insecure and you see yourself in it. And let me tell you, as a woman, if you're insecure, your relationships are not going to work. They are just going to be one hustle after another and you'll think something is wrong with you. But there's nothing wrong with you. You just need to deal with insecurity. As a man, you are going to be missing the mark all the time, losing on business all the time. Why? Because of insecurity. Get to know how to get rid of insecurity forever. Get a hold of this book. Most men release steam from their peers. So if you get the wrong peers, I was lucky due to Kinabella, I got peers in church. If I got, because I had peers in St. Anna's, mm -hmm. that was my school, mm -hmm. who were bad, who used to have do bad things, but I didn't go into that company. Mm -hmm. I used to love this company of church. So the peers, the people I was around with. So be mm -hmm. careful who you are around. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I think that is something that is really important if I can tell... To tell the young people. The young people understand. And by the way, by the way, those of you who are watching us, Cairo is only 19. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a 19-year-old mm. speaking to you and telling you that it is possible for you to make right choices. See, he was young enough to make all the wrong choices, but he chose to work with the right company, and that kept him safe. So right now, you could be in that situation where you're surrounded by people who are taking drugs, people who are having illicit sex, people who are doing all manner of things. You need to come out. Because let me tell you, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. And if you haven't become, you're on your way there. Because you can never become different.
from the people you work with. So you as a young person, be very careful who is around you. No matter how much you want to change. If that's your company, you're not changing. So sometimes you need to just delete some numbers and go to the delete one and totally remove them. Uh -huh. Because company, bad company can corrupt totally. And so be very careful who you work with. Something I can add, ma'am, is the thing about man enough. You know, nowadays sometimes I can sit and think and put my hands like this, and mostly I'm being told, one Just because maybe I was thinking and I put my hands down. So I'm told one evil. So a lot of things I was facing when I was in primary and I was in high school about not having, not having a father, I used to think I need to fight it alone and not talk to somebody. The person who removed that was John Derry because I used to do some funny stuff and post on my story and it's like, Jakes, Toa. Mm. <laughs> so, so sometimes when I got some, somebody like that to correct me slowly by slowly, I started saying that. So the thing about man enough, if you get a man, and this, I think, I think this is very important. And if I live here, this is something I want to live with. Find somebody you can trust, because that is something you're looking for. That is surely something you're looking for. So f really search for someone you can trust, yeah. and somebody who is valuable, who can get you out of your depression, or get you out of your nightmares, mm -hmm. or get you out of uh, the hatred that you've uh, developed and uh, not having a uh, one parent. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you get somebody you can trust and this somebody is willing to walk you through. Because I think something about mentors is John Dere, when he took me, he didn't leave me where I was. He helped you. He took me way higher. Because you saw things in a different perspective. And even now when he's not even in Kenya, yeah. I am at a place where, where he left me, he's assured that I can continue the journey. That's awesome. So get a mentor. Is get that a what mentor. You, that's what you're telling get young a mentor. people mm. of, of your age. Get that's that's wonderful. So, man of God. Mm -mm. That's the sign. Yes. Why man enough? <laughs> yeah, man enough. You know, some of the men don't come to it because of that name. You know, they think you're putting this pressure on me again. Mm -hmm. uh, but men love challenge. Men love challenge. So we actually wanted to see that men are challenged enough uh, to come and express themselves for who they are. So it's not to tell them you are not man enough. It's to tell them you are actually man enough. You just need to unleash what is within. Uh, so come, let's walk together. So in Man Enough, uh, through the 10 lessons or so, uh, eight lessons and then two retreats, uh, what we basically do is um, talk about redefining what it means to be a man. Mm. Uh, you know, just what does it mean to be a man? Let's redefine that in the 21st century and from a biblical perspective. Right. Uh, number two, we say let's create a brotherhood, the company you're talking about. Uh, because you need those brothers, you mm. need comrades. Right. Uh, I, I think your your football team, they say never walk alone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure that's not your football mm. team. Uh, but never walk alone. You know, have a company of other mm. men uh, that you can learn from. That Those are the mentors, those are the boys. Uh, number three is to provide a safe place to be real. Uh, never forget one man who stood up in the Man Enough cohort because we should commit in the beginning. Mm. This is a safe place. Whatever you say here stays here, as long as it's legal. <laughs> but it stays here. And uh, a man stood up and said, for like 15 years, I've been, um, you know, I've been, my wife has been meting out violence against me, beating me up and stuff. And I couldn't tell anyone. But this is what I've gone through. Uh, but men become so real. They talk about whatever it is they've gone through, break down and cry. Yes, big boys should cry uh, because emotions are a gift from the Lord to show us what's going on inside. Right. And so providing a safe place for men to be real, to be themselves and feel like they don't have to show, show off for anyone, be macho towards anyone. They just be themselves in that place. And lastly, it's a significance is to say success is not it, there's significance. There's a lot more God created you to wow. be. A blessing to your family, the pride of your children, uh, and uh, well, 
uh, the love of your wife. Uh, so calling them to say, there's a lot more God has called you to be. Rise up, looking for money and getting a good car and growing beard is not yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot more to it. <laughs> uh, there's an impact. There are fathers to, uh, sons to raise yeah. and daughters to raise in the community. So that's why we do Man Enough. I think for me is making sure young men don't go through what I went through. Uh, to try and cling to little bits of, uh, you know, uh, pieces of masculinity I could get from different people. Uh, I thought that's not fair for anyone. Uh, let's start a community where men can, in an organized way, be socialized into what it means to be a real man. Wow. And then they'll be able to come out of there and be celebrated by those who matter most to them. Amen. How long have you done it now? Uh, it's nine years now. Wow. Close to 30,000 men have gone through it. So just wow. to imagine 30,000 families have been impacted. Isn't that um, wow. Yeah, just yeah. two days ago I was walking into a, a restaurant and this lady comes to me and said, whatever you eat here, I'm going to pay for it. I yeah. said, why? Wow. Uh, and she says, sit down, it's a long story. And she told me basically uh, four years ago uh, uh, we had arranged everything about separation with my husband. And then he said, let me do man enough, and then you can go. So give me a few weeks. I finish this program, then you can leave. And uh, she said the man changed so much, she couldn't believe it. And she said, that man, after that, we even did um, a recommitment of vows. He became just a good man. And so four years later, uh, I can't let him go. And, and just to hear such kind of stories of men changing and God working with them. I think God just needs an opportunity uh, to be able to speak to his people. So uh, that's what I love about it, working with different churches, organizations. It's just a blessing to see that happen. And of course, wow. produce more men yes. who will be good fathers uh, so that the next generation of men will be a blessing. I think that's the joy of it. That is so powerful, yeah. man of God. That is so powerful. Until your mind changes, your life will never change. Did you know that your thoughts hold the master key to the life that you desire? Just think about it. If you want to change your life, you must change the way you think. Did you also know that experience is not the best teacher, but wisdom is? I am so excited to be bringing to you my latest book. I'm calling it Think on These Things. In his new book, Bishop Allen has put together a collection of power thoughts, insights, perspectives, and practical applicable wisdom drawn from his exciting years of experience. Inside the book, you will find deep insights on the power of purpose, integrity, self-leadership, excellence, the power of the mind, among others. Truth is a universal commodity. Wherever it is applied, it produces the same results. A lot of men don't talk to their sons. Mm. They have sons mm. and they are just there. They, they, are, they are even present yeah. mm. but not present. Does that passive. make sense? Yeah. They are just passive. They are yeah. there. You can see the father is in the house and mm. the son is in the house. Mm. But they just kneel by mouth. They yeah. never talk. Mm. What, what would you advise those men? Big mistake. I think being passive is even worse psychologically than being abusive. Mm. And that sounds like an uh, overstatement, but it's true. When a child can't tell what's up with you, it disturbs their mind a lot more than if you are abusing them. Of course, there's no lesser evil, wow. but I'm just using that. There's a boy that uh, I'd been caught in one of the schools in Nairobi mm. with marijuana on his de desk. Uh, and so I was asked to counsel with him and said, man, nobody does that. If you have marijuana, you don't leave it on your desk. What's up with you? Mm. Uh, and he said, I wanted to be caught. I said, why? Why would you do that? Because I wanted to be sent home so that my dad could get mad with me and punish me. I said, why would you do that? He said, 
Uh, you know, my dad is uh, an elder in one of the churches, but he never talks to me. He never asks me what I did in school, never asks for my report card. He just doesn't care. So I said, let me do something really stupid so that my dad will have a reason to beat me up. And as he beats me up, at least he will show concern. Jesus. I said, did it work? He said, no. Oh. He said, I took this suspension letter. I timed when my mom was in the kitchen and I gave to my dad and he was watching something on TV. I said, dad, here is something. And I stood there waiting to be slapped or something. And at least I'll feel loved. And he said, the man looked at the letter, looked at me and looked at the letter and said, go and call your mom. And the mom came into the room and said, look at this letter and deal with your stupid boy. Both of you get out of my sight. So the, the young man said, since that day, I live as if my father is dead. I just assume I don't have a father. This is a, a boy who has a dad at home, but he's passive. Right. And he's saying, what can I do to bring him out? Yeah. Uh, so I think just to tell dads that uh, don't be around, you know, they say the lights are on, but no one home. Right. Don't be like that. You know, if you're there, be there. Be right. available, be engaged. Talk. Talk to your children because passivity could be a curse in itself. Mm. Uh, we were with my wife and the context is important. We looked at this lady. She had nice hair. So we told her, wow, you're so pretty. Mm. She began to cry. I told my wife, did we do something wrong? <laughs> I said, no, she's pretty. Uh, when she was done crying, we asked, what, what happened? Uh, and she said, because I don't think I'm pretty. Uh, she's like in her 40s. She says, whenever someone tells me I'm pretty, we're done. I never come to them again. Uh, that's why I'm not married. And said, who told you you're not pretty? She said, when I was nine, I came to my dad and he was watching a, a TV show. Uh, and, and I had worn this little dress and I wanted him just to say I look nice. And I said, Dad, how do I look? And my dad said, get out of my sight. I'm watching something, can't you see? From that day, she thought she was so ugly that the father couldn't stand her. So you see, the father is present, but he's passive. Yeah. He's not engaged. Right. He's not saying what he should say. Right. And this lady, until 48, she can't get married because anyone who says you're beautiful, it's, it's over. Because of her father who refused to say something. So just to say, again, passivity is a curse. It's actually the curse of masculinity. Uh, and um, the, the picture of fatherhood today is perfectly the prediction of masculinity tomorrow. So fathers, what you're doing to your sons or not doing is setting them up for the masculinity of tomorrow. Right. So just for us to realize we really have to wake up and do what we've got to do. Mm. Yeah, it's a high so, calling. It's yeah. not a casual thing that yes. we do. Yes. Uh, fatherhood is a high calling. Let's do it with pride. Yeah. yeah. And most of the fathers have left it to the mothers. You see like that mm. father who said, go mm. tell your mother. Yeah. And a lot of fathers are like that. Mm. To the, they just send kids to the mothers. Yeah. You go and work with your mother. Do it with your mother, mother, mother. You know. Yeah, and you see, that's what leads to the empowered woman. Mm. Who many times, of mm. course, I, I am more for empowering women. Uh, so my two daughters are empowered. You know, they. Yeah, you, you can see me after this, but okay. uh, I have good daughters. Um, but I, I think we we've gotten to a place where then the boys don't know how don't know how to be strong mm. because there wasn't a voice of a person like them who called them out. When there was a boy, uh, there was a boy during Mother's uh, Day in one of the schools mm. who was taught, this is what a dad does, this is what a dad does. Mm. And, and then he said, well, when I grow up, I want to be a dad like my mom. <laughs> because oh. my, the mom is almost doing everything mm. <laughs> that they talked about fathers do. Yeah. Uh, so just to realize, I think as fathers, we have to provide that. If we don't provide that, uh, that model of strong, loving, caring masculinity, then our sons will be lost. Mm. And you can imagine in three generations we'll have no masculinity. Mm. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Mm. And you know, uh, Pastor, I totally believe that mm. that's the plan of the enemy. Yeah. Your story is with many people mm. who didn't grow up with a father. Mm. And so you, you've represented a, a lot of young 
guys who mm. don't have a clue what a father is mm. you know mm. and and uh, man of god you standing and representing mm. men mm. across the board mm. well, those who lost their parents you know their father especially mm. and have really had mm. to find their, their own way, way. Yeah. but i believe that the plan of the enemy is to really disempower mm. Mm. the man child that's true because once the the man the, the boy child has no idea mm. whether he's coming going or gone mm. you know everything yeah. else becomes mm. crazy that's true if yeah. you're an enemy mm. you would get several for one and that's what the enemy does when he gets a man because then you affect the women who love that man you affect the children, children who look up to that man. You affect the generation who will hear the name of that man. Mm. You know, the power of masculinity is that I carry a name that is not only mine. Yeah. There are children somewhere answering to my name. There's a woman somewhere answering to my name. Mm -hmm. And if I don't carry my name well, then I destroy all of them. Mm -hmm. And those grandchildren who will want to carry my name. So just realizing, you know, the the power that we possess, right. and realizing the enemy is after the man, right? And you know, pleading with all of us, men and women, let's support the war for the soul of man. Yes. Not yes. to destroy him, but to raise him to up. To raise him up. Yeah, to raise him up. That's yeah. why I believe, you know, that uh, um, Malachi four six mm. says, "Before the coming of the day of the Lord." before we can see a real move of God in right. our land, right. fatherhood Fathers. must be restored. Yeah. Because then therein lies the seed, therein lies the voice, the prophetic voice yeah. of calling out, right. the, man, uh, the man in a boy yeah. and the woman in a girl, mm -hmm. therein lies that power. Now, if you're the enemy and you take that out, you take the voice, prophetic voice, yeah. you take the seed, uh, you spoil the name, right. You've got a lot. And a good name is better than rubies, the Bible says. That's right. And so it's very important. That's Man of right. God, you've written, Dad is destiny. Yeah. What, can you tell us a little about that? Man is de Dad is destiny. Yeah, the difference a father makes. I think that I wrote out of my own story, just realizing what I went through, mm -hmm. and then talking a lot to women and men who didn't have fathers and realizing how big is, is a deal. Mm -hmm. And I realized uh, fatherhood or the lack thereof mm -hmm. shapes our destiny. Uh, and so that's to say that. And then to say, of course, if we didn't have dads or they shaped our destiny in the wrong way, uh, then there's a God in heaven who can reorganize that destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we did a study recently as, as I closed that and we were shocked, Reverend. Mm. Out of uh, almost 5,000 Kenyans in mm. different counties that we asked the question, tell us about your dad. Was he a good dad or not a good dad? 82% said yes, they were either unfathered without a dad, underfathered with very little dad, uh, or misfathered with a bad dad. Oh. I mean, to me, that's, that's a bad day. 82. 82%. Out of the same, uh, you know, team that we asked those questions, 78% said they were so proud of their moms. So it's like inverted. Yeah. And, and just for me to see that, I said we are a fatherless nation. Oh we are an unfathered nation and a continent and, and, and slowly becoming an unfathered world mm. because the enemy knows if I hit the man, the man and remove the foundation, yeah, the foundation the building will begin to come that's down. It. It will uh, crash. so i think that's what that book is about is for healing mm. is for those without dads and yeah. bad experiences of dads and all of us with good dads we realize god is even a greater dad <laughs> he's the ultimate dad so yeah. we get to see his our destiny mm. uh, and so that's what that book is that's about. powerful yes. A while ago, I wrote a beautiful book on celebrate yourself. And I've come to realize if you don't know how to celebrate yourself, nobody will celebrate you. If you don't know how to enjoy yourself as a single person, you will not enjoy yourself as a married person. You need to embrace you. The Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Meaning, you cannot love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. It's all about you first. If you love you, you can accommodate others. This book is going to bless you. It will show you how to celebrate yourself because you're all that and a bag of chips and a dip on the side. Ooh, 
there is another one you've written mm. that the commitments, five commitments of a real man. Yeah. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's, a, that's a good one. So we say number one is character, uh -huh. commitment to character. Right. That's where honor is. Monomony well, character. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> CFO, well, yeah. many character. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is comrades, that you have friends around you, that you commit yourself to. Number three is faith. Uh, that your faith, you're a man of God, that you can bow the knee uh, before the almighty God and do what is right. Uh, number four is a mission in life that you're committed to a mission. You know what you're about and uh, you're going there. Uh, you're going there. What's the fourth one now? Uh, for, forgotten. Yeah. We can look at the yes. back of the book. Yes. Okay. Uh, they're actually there. Right there. You can read for us. Um, <laughs> so there's a course, course, which is a mission. Commitment to character. Character, which is the honor. Commitment to family. Family is the honor I was forgetting. How yes. <laughs> There's family, there's friends, and there's faith. Yeah. Right. I think if a man commits to those five, uh, it will be, if you do that, every woman in town would want to marry you. <laughs> if God leads them. <laughs> well, I think that's, that's a great commitment. Yes. Uh, and it, it's, it's from the Bible. Yeah. Wow, that's it's from powerful. The Bible. And you, you've also written praying effectively for our families. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it's about Gideon and mm -hmm. how, you know, God is calling him to be, to lead his nation. Right. And um, he begins to say, no, I cannot be a leader. Mm -hmm. And then he says, but there are issues at home. And then God tells him, God deal with home, then come and lead the nation. And I really believe what happens at home affects what we do abroad. Uh, and so it's about dealing with generational curses, mm -hmm. uh, building up a prayer altar at home, mm -hmm. and making sure that the negative realities of home don't follow you wherever you go. Right. Uh, so it's really doing a Gideon's action, dealing with issues at home mm. and bringing the light home. Mm. Yeah. Man of God, I could just go on and on and mm. on because it's so wonderful. You have mm. such insight, such revelation when it comes to man. Okay. And I thank God for you. Okay. And uh, what I would say is never shut your voice. Mm. It's a voice that is needed by mm -hmm. this generation, you, mm -hmm. my husband, and, uh, and some other, you know, there mm -hmm. are not so many. That's true. There are not so many that are that's doing true. this. Mm -hmm. That's why you see the girl child is so empowered. Mm -hmm. And many times they say at the expense of the boy child. True. Because, you know, the boy child is really mm -hmm. in trouble. They really, really need help. That's and true. so please continue just adding volume mm -hmm. and, and shouting from the rooftops. Thank and you. just bringing those men together, 30,000 mm. and going to 300,000 and then 3 million. And the, because that's, that's what's up. Amen. That's really what's up. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Good for work. Good work with the women. Thank I appreciate it. I'm so privileged to be here. Thank you. And look forward to us uh, partnering together to yes. do a lot more together. Absolutely. And hear such wonderful stories yes. of what God is doing here. So we celebrate you and we celebrate. Uh, dad as well thank and you. what is happening in the church. Thank you. God we bless thank you. you. Thank you so, so much. And so thank God you. bless you so much. So I want you to look at this camera and take three minutes and just speak to a young person concerning being fatherless and what they ought to do. Like what you, you, you did as a young man and what, what can help them. Um, hi. Uh, this is my message to you. If you're being raised uh, under a single parent, either father or mother, I would advise that everybody out there is not for you. They might take advantage of something you think is a disadvantage, but it is not. They might take advantage of you, teach you something that they will benefit and not you. If you can get in a church, and serve, please do. Mm -hmm. Just go, just something small like going to your church, if you serve juice and biscuit after service, please just go do that mm -hmm. wholeheartedly. Because in church, I promise you, is the safest place you can get escape from your depression, from your anxiety, or from you feeling not loved, if you feel that you're not loved. And if you're there, and you feel that without uh, having a father or a mother is a disadvantage, trust me, 
after you will see that having that one parent sometimes is actually an advantage. Mm -hmm. I promise you I couldn't be the man I am right now, maybe if I had my father present. I appreciate my mother for what she did alone because it gave me the strength that I have right now. So take it positively. And I think something about life is managing the problem that you have. If you find a solution to the problem, you will succeed. Find a mentor. If you want to do photography, if you want to do film, if you want to do art, if you want to do engineering, find a mentor who can teach you, train you your gift. Because in your gifting, you can actually get another escape from you not feeling loved. So find a mentor, find a father figure or a mother figure in your family or in church. Some that, somebody you can trust and somebody that can uh, take you to another level. That's my message. That's so powerful. Mm -hmm. That is so amazing. Man of God, what would you tell the men? Mm -hmm. They are watching you out there. Mm -hmm. They are in that situation right mm -hmm. now. What mm -hmm. would you? Just take a few minutes mm -hmm. and just speak to a man. I think I'll say to you, man, that don't have a father, uh, that's not the end of it. Whatever you've gone through, that can be dealt with. You can face it. You can acknowledge it. You can break out of it and not uh, find yourself in prison cells of alcohol or illicit sex or whatever else. You can break out of it. You're better than that. And uh, you can find community. You can find fatherhood like I have found and I've offered to other people. And all of us could depend on God. And just to all of you that have been abandoned by your fathers, I want to ask for forgiveness. Because as fathers, we have hurt you. We have denied you what is your right, what would have helped you. And we just want to apologize. And I want to ask all the men who have not taken responsibility over their children, please make arrangements to be available. That child needs you. They did not hurt you. Someone else might have, but not the child. Uh, do your part and let's be the man. We we'll not only apologize, but uh, you know, make good uh, our wrongs. Lastly, let's grow up and uh, be the man God created us to be. There's a lot in us, we are man enough. Let's unleash the man within and be men of honor, duty, and care. God bless you. So Cairo, tell me uh, as a young man now, what are you doing? Are you keeping yourself busy? Mm. Are you working? And what is that? Uh, since I told you earlier on, I got mentors who were to train me uh, in what I do. After learning photography, then I started having uh, uh, an interest in film. So I went to a guy called Davy, David Kamau, thank you so much. I went to him and I told him, uh, I want to come. You teach me how to do film. And what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be washing the office and washing the dishes. Uh, just that. Me, I just want to come. You teach me. Then when I'm good, I think you can give me a job. You will decide. So I'm under him, learning photography and also working from him. But on the side, due to COVID, uh, I ran a show. It's called Cairo Live. I used to run it on Instagram, but now it's on YouTube, where I have a guest and learn about their career. Because I got the opportunity of having Chris Wanga and Davey to teach me what I need to know to uh, get me into my career. But there's so many people who don't have uh, that contact with their mentors or people who have succeeded in the industry. So it's something I'm trying to offer with my show, where I have a guest like you, ma'am. I learn about your career. I learn how you started, your mistake, your experiences that many people like me, my age, can learn from them. They know that if I'm using this road, it has this number of bumps, it has these portals, it is smooth, so I know how I'm gonna get to point B very fast and safely. Wow, yeah. so how do we get on your channel? Yeah, so on my channel, my channel on YouTube is at Cairo. that is J-O-J-A-K-E-S, Cairo. On all my social media platform also is at Cairo. Cairo. Yes. Okay, you all, find your way. Like now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I tell you, we could go on and on. This is just amazing. I want to thank you for tuning in today. I know that the Lord has absolutely blessed you. Now remember to hold that man that's beside you and acknowledge him. Be the help that God desires for you to be. He has called us helpers for a purpose. There is a reason for that name. And I want you to just help him 
when he does well, when he tries, acknowledge it and let him know that he is really trying. Because the more you put him down, the more you add pressure, the worse the situation gets. And so understand that being a man is not a joke. That's the foundation. That is it. They carry a lot of load because of what they are mandated to do by God. And so when he's stepping, at least taking a step here and there, acknowledge it and help him to be all that God created him to be. This is Woman Without Limits. And may God bless you and put a hedge of fire round about you and watch over you in Jesus' name. Woman, woman, woman.